want to begin this hour off the coast of Libya, where a deadly shipwreck is being called the worst tragedy in the Mediterranean this year. Rights groups say more than 100 migrants were killed, but even the survivors are thought to be in danger, as they will likely be sent to crowded detention centres. Many of those centres lie perilously close to the intense fighting in Libya and have already been targeted to disastrous effect. Our Jumana Karachi is following this story and joins us now. Uh, Jumana, do we know any more at this stage or how this tragedy happened? And what are authorities telling you? Well, what we understand, Lisa, from the Libyan Coast Guard, also the United Nations, other agencies that were involved in the rescue operations, is that about 250 to uh, 300 migrants and refugees were crammed into this wooden boat that capsized about five miles off the coast of the city of Homs, that is to the east of the capital, Tripoli. And it was fishermen out in the sea who began the rescue operations, who called in the Libyan Coast Guard and who joined them in that rescue operation. They say that they were able to pull out about 134 survivors. The fear, of course, is for about 100 to 150 uh, people who are missing at this point and presumed to be dead. We're told that the majority of those on that boat uh, were Arab and African migrants and refugees from countries, the majority of them from Eritrea, and also some Sudanese and Palestinians many women and children. Take a listen to some of the details of this ordeal in the words of one of the survivors. There were 300 of us in the boat and then water came in. 100 people were rescued, but the rest all died. The women, children and girls all died. Glory to God, we started swimming for almost seven hours. And then we were rescued by fishermen, almost 100 people. We have been here for two days and no one has come to take us. There has been a dead body here with us for the past two days. Glory to God, it is like we were fighting death in the sea and now we are fighting death on the ground. And of course, Isa, a lot of concern being voiced by uh, different human rights organizations, by the United Nations, for those who are rescued. Because once they're rescued, they're sent back to Libya. And as you mentioned there, they're taken to these overcrowded detention facilities across Tripoli uh, that have been described as really horrific. You know, so the conditions there, uh, we've heard it from the United Nations in various reports. We've heard it from uh, some of those detainees themselves in these facilities where you know you have so many people there you don't have uh, sanitation not enough latrines uh, they are uh, badly treated by a lot of these militias who are running these facilities and as we saw just earlier this month they are in Tripoli this is a battle zone and a lot of these centers are close to front lines and earlier this month, a month, Isa, we reported on more than 50 migrants who were killed in an airstrike that hit one of those facilities. Yeah, so powerful that account from that migrant basically saying we're fighting death on the sea and now we're fighting death on the ground. Really gives you some perspective of what they're facing there. Jamana Karache, thank you very much. I want to go to Charlie Yaxley, who works for the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights as the global spokesperson on mixed migration for the Mediterranean Africa. He joins me now. Charlie, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us here on the show. I want to get first your sense of what you're hearing uh, about this devastating tragedy, because I'm not sure if you heard the account from one of the migrants there he said he's been wait they've been waiting seven hours they swam for several hours and then now they're on the ground they still no one's actually gone to to help them what are you hearing well this is a, a horrific event and with these numbers coming in uh, this would make this the worst shipwreck that we've seen in the last two years um, the previous time we saw a death on, on this level was in a shipwreck off Tripoli in May 2017. Uh, and that means there's now more than 700 people who have lost their lives on the Mediterranean this year. Uh, and it's important that we remember that these are more than just figures. Behind that 700 uh, uh, individual men women and, and children uh, who were in search of a better life for themselves. Many of them were leaving behind war, violence and persecution uh, in their home countries. 
uh, and all of them were facing the immediate challenge of an extremely volatile security situation inside Libya. Um, so this has to be a turning point now. Uh, this has to lead to a, a shift in approach um, that means people are not held in detention centres, they're not driven into the hands of smugglers and traffickers who organise these boat journeys, uh, but a, a new efforts are made to prevent loss of life at sea. Uh, but Charlie, we've said this so many times, we've heard this so many times, it's, this is a turning point, this has to be a turning point, and nothing has actually shifted. Uh, what more can authorities do? Because we've been hearing from the UN being highly critical uh, of the conditions on the ground in Libya, but nothing seems to have shifted. So what more can be done politically? Well, uh, more so stronger measures could, could certainly be put in place uh, to arrest and prosecute the smugglers and traffickers who, whose business model uh, is to profit from people's despair and misery. We know that many of them are also linked with the smuggling of drugs and weapons and other criminal activities. So uh, more needs to be done now to strengthen law enforcement measures to, to hold those to account uh, and to dismantle the networks themselves. Um, at the same time, you know, I, I think since the aftermath of the Tajora incident, where more than 50 mm. people lost their life in a detention centre that was hit by a missile, there has been an agreement that this continued use of holding people inside detention centres has to stop. Uh, and we've now come forward, we've proposed some options, you know, whether that's the immediate and orderly release of people into the urban environment, or whether that's the establishment of open centres that would be have unhindered access for humanitarian organizations there's ways that we can do this but what's clear is that while the clashes are ongoing we also need states to come forward and help us get the most vulnerable immediately out of harm's way you were talking there charlie about prosecuting uh, some of those individuals who are trafficking who are benefiting financially from uh, from these treacherous crossings but this is a lawless land i mean libya is so lawless at the moment where do you start how can libya actually do that can europe support it in any way Well, it, it is the case that uh, some of these people who have links to those networks can, can be identified. Uh, in the past, there have been yeah. individuals with such links that have been identified and, and sanctioned, uh, but that can only go uh, so far. It does need the, the rule of law to be uh, enforced, and, and that needs to be made uh, a priority. Uh, and side by side with that, it ne we need to make sure that detention centres, particularly the unofficial ones uh, that are a core part of the business model for some of these smugglers, uh, that, they, that they cease to exist and we don't have refugees fleeing war and violence being brought back to the, the very danger they were seeking to escape from. Uh, Charlie Yaxley there, I appreciate you taking the time to speak to us here on CNN Newsroom, another tragedy in the Mediterranean Sea. Thank you, Charlie, I appreciate it.